closer to the ground, right? Yes, <laughs> Compared uh, to us. <laughs> well, it does it does make a chest high barrel day, like, oh sick. Yeah. You know, like how did you make it out of that thing, you know? Or <laughs> well, when it's head high, it's like sick. But Jeff's the best. But there are there are a lot of guys, you know, and then even my partner, like Steve Statis, the originator of Borders. Yeah. That guy's like legendary and i grew up surfing with his son christian amazing longboard style like guys just like you know grace to the max you know so th there are so many people down here but you know a lot of these guys they don't get any recognition because nobody really knows them because they don't really they don't care about it you know they yeah. just want to surf and get their sessions in you know so it's but, it's nice you know but it's important for us to kind of perpetuate some of exactly. their legend, exactly. I think, you know, and exactly. talking about it like here, like for our listeners, even just to know, like there's there, there, I feel like there's a lot of new surfers and, you know, which is great. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not totally opposed to that, but uh, I, I just want them to uh, a lot of people, newer surfers to know, like there was a lot that came before is quite a bit of history oh, yeah. in Rockaway. And also, it wasn't always easy. I mean, like, surfing was not allowed in Rockaway for years, for decades. You know, oh, it was, yeah. like, illegal we, during we the fought, summer. We fought for that border surf shop, man. Forget it. We, Steve, they were, if you really look into the history of Steve Stathis, they had yeah. the Rockaway Beach Club in the 60s. They yeah. had custom jackets made up, and that was um, from Thomas's movie, Shadows yeah, of the Same Sun. Exactly. Yeah. And um, you know, it, it it dawned some light on them going down to City Hall and like, you know, protesting and fighting to get a a surfing only beach. And you're talking 50, 60 years ago. Yeah. So for it to finally become into flourishing in like the late nineties, like I think whenever we pulled it off, amongst other, you know, community yeah. people in the neighborhood that helped us along with that. Um but obviously, it always helps to have a business attached to the whole, you know, trying to get something into, uh, especially dealing with the city. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, it, it's – and then we pushed for the skate park, too, to have a skate yeah. park, which took even longer to get, you know. But, and that um, was like Tim yeah. Hill was was involved and, like, God, yeah, rest me in and peace. Tim, you, you know, know? He, the first round of uh, After Sandy, obviously, because the, the first skate park, they gave us an aluminum recta set. And, I mean – the features were cool and all, but the thing <laughs> rusted in six months. I mean, it was like a tetanus park, you know? So it was a like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just like, you know, wow. Like the city blew how much money on this Erecta set? Like, okay, let's put a bunch of steel right in front of the ocean. Like, what do you think? You know? So, but, but it's, it set the precedent to like, okay, this is the skate park area. So like yeah. once Sandy wiped that thing out, the whole park ended up in the lobby of my building. It was crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, crazy I know. Shit. exactly, <laughs> crazy. You know, I mean, you can't even make this stuff up. You know. Uh, well, I just, I just remember like the, you know, the old boardwalk and and also just how sketchy it, it and parts used to be. I mean, there were parts oh, where, yeah. you know, you had wild dogs who attacked people, you know, and killed people. Oh, yeah, actually. you had everything, man. I mean, I, needles I, it, everywhere. Even in, in our video, in the, the video we released a while back, The Good Times, uh, yeah. you know, even in a couple of the different interviews, we were shooting a lot of down of like the spots where, you know, a lot of the Brooklynites kind of claim now, which is like down in the 30s or the 50s or wherever they go, you know? Yeah. And that place, forget it, dude. You'd had to have one of the guys man the car, if yeah. not two, because you were definitely getting broken into, or you were getting propositioned by women with no teeth. <laughs> and then there was also, like you said, the wild packs of dogs out of nowhere. Like it was gnarly, man. It was like it. No offense to California, but it made LA look like pff, whatever. You know, it, it really. You know? I mean, I I I look at when I see now people leaving boards on their roof racks. Oh, I dude. just shake my head like you have no idea. You would Bro. never, ever, like you couldn't even leave your car alone. <laughs> no, my my buddy, you know Scotty Keaton, right? Yeah. Scotty Keaton, he worked for Nike SB forever. Yeah. Now he's like in charge of a couple of new companies that he's working on. And um, 
at the time he was the Nike rep and he was also repping like snowboard companies or something. And he had all the stuff in his truck in the Tahoe. <laughs> he went down on a beach. He put his keys in the, in the thing, hit his keys. They cased it, watched him. He paddled out. Bro, they robbed the whole Tahoe with everything in it. And he had to go to the precincts in his wetsuit with his surfboard. Oh, was like, my Yo, gosh. They robbed my car. And they're like, well, how did they break in? They're like, no, they took my keys and robbed it. And they were like, <laughs> so they found the car in the body shop down in Far Rock. And, you know, the sneakers, who knows? They probably ended up on eBay. But, you know, like... <laughs> But like, yeah, this is the shit that used to go down, you know? So it's, it's, I guess it's a blessing now that you have a little bit more, uh, you know, but people still get jacked, you know, come on, New York, you gotta, you gotta pay attention. Yeah, no, it is funny. Like I, I don't, I totally, it blows my mind when I walk around parts of the city and I see people leaving their boards on top of cars and I'm like, part of me just wants to unstrap that board just just to make them aware, you know, like, oh, hey. Unstrap it and just lean it on the side yeah, of their car yeah. gently just to give them that. And just be like, hey, you man. Know, when they look out the window, it's York not on still. the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want to steal. I don't want to steal. I just want to make people aware. Like, it is still New York and there's still parts where, you know, yeah. there's still people who are going to fuck with you in some ways. But I my mean, dad it is- did that to me back in the day with my first <laughs> Huffy. He bought me a Huffy and I used to ride it full speed up to my house and like jump off and let it slam on the floor and then run in the house and I'd leave it yeah. right in front of the stoop oh. and one day he put it on the side of the house and I came out I flipped out and he was like how did that feel <laughs> how did that feel and I was like I was so scared you were gonna kill me and he's like ah not at all he goes you just want to get another huffy <laughs> so he's like don't don't do that anymore you know go lock Lesson it up in the learned. yard you know so I was like okay cool you know yeah, I remember getting a board stolen off my buddy's rack. We were just checking the surf in Long Beach, and mm-hmm. board was strapped in and everything. I just wasn't even, like, literally 20 feet from me, but I was just looking at the ocean. Came back, where the fuck's my board? <laughs> Where's my board, man? <laughs> like, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely it's changed a little bit for sure. but In a good way. Know, in a, in a great way, actually, but yeah. it is funny. Like, hey, did your dad surf or did he do anything like? No, 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 no. My dad was more a sports guy. You know, he was. Uh, did he support your surfing to... and skating? Oh, my parents were so supportive. I I mean, honestly, dude, I, I dropped out of college to go work at Blades in Manhattan. My parents were like, you what? And wow. I was like, yeah, I got a job at this awesome skate shop in Manhattan. And they were like, well what about electrical engineering? And I was like, nah, I'm good with that. And that was it. That was in 1991. I was like 18, 19, working at Blades. And I worked for the Cabot family for a decade. And then I basically worked at every single other store except for Supreme. Wow. So whatever shop existed in Manhattan, I worked there. (laughs) Did you know Brendan Babison then, who... Who uh, he used to be like a buyer for blades at yep, some point. I know Brendan really well. Yeah, like yeah, a lot of he, his he new actually line designed Noah. him. Yeah, I actually um, he actually designed the original couple of St. James logos. No way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's I'm like I'm, I'm I'm spacing out on my his partner right now, Vinny. His yeah. partner Vinny. They used to have a, a marketing firm called Big Bully back in the '90s. Nice. And they would they would do designs, websites, banners, like graphic art, all of that stuff. And they were like, they designed my first webs, all of the stuff. They were like the best. Yeah, it's it's so cool. Like, I mean, it's it's pretty neat. Like, that, yeah, he, I had him on the show like a, a few episodes back and uh, real fun talking to him about kind of that old old time, you know, back at being at Blades and being like a buyer for blades in the late nineties was like, you were the king of cool and like working at blades, oh, yeah. you were the king of cool, you know, just that was the oh, spot. It was, it was, it was chaos and it was lawlessness. And it was also at the same time, it was like strict. And like, I learned, I learned so much. I basically, then when I, when I left blades, I was like, you know what, maybe I should go to school for business so I could just learn the terminology and have the proper verbiage so when I speak to people, it's not like I already know what's going on. 
but I yeah. need to communicate in the language that they want to speak. You know what I mean? So I went to business school and then I was like, all right, I'm just kind of wasting money here right now. So I just kind of like, <laughs> Not teaching I came close to an know. associates in business and I was like, I'm making more money and I'm, I'm more busy just doing what I got to do and learning in real time in real life experience, whether I was getting burned or learning or profiting, you know what I mean? So it's just, I, I do better with that anyway. But, um, did you, did you hang much with Pat Conlon at all back in that day, those days? Oh, that's my boy. I mean, we yeah. grew up together. They, he, well, you know Pat. I mean, he's give, got give some epic good backstory on Pat. Give some, give well, give our well, listeners the, a little bit crew, of uh, backstory on, on Pat Conlon and the crew. Yeah, the, Pat. Pat was like, you know, the Rockaway guy that like went to college out in Cali and just became super popular out there with like all the pros and the artists. And then he came back to New York and he was just like the guy. You know what I mean? Like that had all the connects in the industry. You know? Yeah. And. Uh, but he had this, his cynical, sarcastic humor still has not changed one drop. So it's pretty, <laughs> pretty epic because him and another massive legend, uh, Richie Allen, which yeah. uh, I was good friends with that passed away in 9-11 on the FDNY, yeah. which Beach 90th Street is named after him. It's called exactly. Richie Allen's Way. Um, Pat and Richie, when the lineup was 10 people max when, the, when it was pumping out, they would yell at me and say, get out of here. Go back to, go back to Howard Beach because Guidos don't surf. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, fuck you guys. I'm like, you're my best friends. Like, I, I hang out with you guys all the time. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, but it just sounds so good. Go back to the bay, you Guido. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, fuck out of here. You know, so it's it just like, you know, so he still says that shit to me. Yeah, but I will give you one funny other story about Pat. He called me out. I felt like such a tool. So I, I hit him up. Yo, I'm going to go paddle out. It's good. Get, get out here, you know, whatever. So sometimes Pat could be late. Let's put it that way. I surfed for like two hours. I'm like, where is this guy? And then it's like gnarly lightning storms coming in, you know, and you see it like zapping down, hitting the ocean. It's getting closer and closer. I'm like, this kid's out. I'm out of here. So I start coming back in after this wave and there he is. He's starting to paddle out. And he's like, yo, where you going? I'm like, dude, I've been surfing for two hours already. I'm like, look at this. You kidding me? This freaking lightning's like 80 yards away. He's like, you're worried about lightning? You got a freaking Black Sabbath tattoo on your arm. What are you talking about? Like, get back out here. I'm like, the hell with you. The hell with you and my Ozzy Osbourne tattoo. I'm like, I don't want to get hit by lightning right now. <laughs> So he'd give me shit for that. You know, that's like typical Pat, you know. But it um it feels like the breaks have definitely changed, you know, over time. Like 90th yeah. doesn't grind like it used to, I feel like. Well, what po most people don't know is like Pat's whole crew and all those boys, they used to call 90th Street the box. Yeah. Because when the sandbar was super solid and that spot was so untouched or undredged. Yeah. yeah. Um it had this perfect square barrel that would break for, let's say, 30, 40 yards. And then you would come out of the box and then you'd have this super long 100-yard ride to do all your roundhouses and the rest of your maneuvers, you know? Um, it was almost like a point break, you know, if memory. Yeah, pretty being, much. You know? Pretty much. You know, I think a lot had to do with it with the dredging and the, storm and the magnitude of the storms that we have nowadays. And then on top of that, they pulled out two blocks of wooden jetties because God rest their souls. A couple yeah. of surfers did. And I fell victim of that too. Like a couple of surfers passed away with their leashes wrapping around those wooden yeah. poles and I getting, remember. you know, that whole pulley effect on the water. And I've been stuck in that situation before and came close myself. So uh, in a way it's, it's nice that they did pull them out for those two blocks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting as they, they, keep re-engineering the beaches with with new groins and other things yeah. like that you know i'm yeah. curious to yeah. see how all that shakes out over time yeah i think it's going to create a lot of new sandbars figuring refiguring out what tides what swell directions wind direct you know all of that will take play and it's, and it's fun because it keeps you on your toes it keeps you youthful following all of that you know yeah exactly well, it makes you feel like you're getting a whole new safari in your yard 
you know? Well, that's the thing. Like, I always, like, I enjoy driving. Like, sometimes when there's swell, I enjoy, like, driving around and looking and just checking out places that people don't even go to, you know? Like, way. Yeah.